In this video, I'm going to talk about evaluating normality in the context of a factorial between subjects ANOVA. So the evaluation of normality is on the dependent variable, and in this case, I'm using the example of video game study, and the dependent variable was punishment. Now the most basic level of analysis with respect to a normality would be to evaluate the skew in kurtosis with the punishment variable just on its own like this. And some people would do that. Unfortunately, it's not sufficiently informative to simply look at the skew in kurtosis of punishment on its own. So let, let's just look at it for the sake of conversation. Skew in kurtosis, click continue. I'm going to deselect the frequency table. I don't need that. And click OK. And we can see that skew was estimated at 1.466 which is actually quite substantial, and kurtosis 2.61. So don't divide 1.46 by standard error of skew to test it for statistical significance. As far as evaluating the assumption of sufficient normality in the ANOVA context, you don't have to do that. Just look at the absolute value. And in this case, 1.466, yes, it's lower than the absolute value of 2.0, but that's not technically the level of analysis that you should be evaluating normality. You should, as I mentioned in the textbook, be looking at skew and kurtosis for each of the groups that you're comparing. And in the context of this analysis, there's a main effect for video game type, there's a main effect for sex, and each one of those main effects have two different means, and they also have two different levels of skew. And you should evaluate the skew for each of those groups individually. And then there's the interaction, and there are four groups to evaluate the interaction. And in that case as well, we'd want to look at the skew and kurtosis individually. So how can we do that? Well, as far as the main effects are concerned, one way to look at that would be to go into Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and Explore, and then put the punishment variable in the dependent list and game type into the factor list. And if you click on OK, we're going to get the skew and kurtosis for the main effects of video game type, violent versus nonviolent. Remember the sample size is 17 and 22 for that main, that main effect analysis? Well, the skew is 0 0.804 for the violent video game, and the skew is 0 0.206 for nonviolent. Kurtosis, 0.211, and for the violent and nonviolent is negative 0.375. So, for the main effect of video game type, violent versus nonviolent, skew is well, well below the 2.0 absolute value and kurtosis is well below the 9.0 value. So I feel satisfied with this, and this is what I would report. In the descriptive statistics table, I would report the means and standard deviations for each of these groups, violent versus nonviolent, for punishment, and then I'd include the skewness and kurtosis. Now to evaluate the gender skewness or normality assumption, go into descriptives, explore, and just switch game type out and put sex into the factor list, and now we're going to get the results for that perspective of the analysis. Skews bumped up. So for the punishment dependent variable, it's always the same dependent variable. For males, the skewness was 1.05 and kurtosis 0.270. Less than absolute values of 2 and 9 should be fine. And here for females on the punishment dependent variable, negative 0.46 and negative 0.35 for skew and kurtosis respectively. Again, far below the rule of 2 and 9 respectively. I also note that when you go through the explore utility, you get the outlier evaluation. So if you wanted to evaluate outliers, you could do that too. And in this case, because there's not a star, it's only a warning that it's an outlier. It's not really a concerning outlier, these cases four and five. And same goes for the other analysis. We just have some warning signals here, nothing really to worry about. So I've looked at the main effect of video game for those two means that have the corresponding skew and kurtosis levels, it was fine. And I also looked at sex and skew and kurtosis was fine for that main effect. Now to evaluate across the four groups with respect to the interaction, it's a little bit trickier. I can still use this utility of Descriptive Statistics Explore, and sex is what I've got here, and I could keep that there, but I gotta splice it across game types if I wanna get all four groups. And one way to get that is to just keep your Explore utility information the same as it is, and then go into Data, and split file. I'm going to split file across game type. And this is going to produce basically a double split. It's going to split across game type here, and then it's going to split across sex. And that's going to give me the four groups when I go into Analyze Descriptives Explore. Keep that like that. Click OK. 
and we can see the sample sizes here. Violent male, sample size 8. Violent female, sample size 9. Nonviolent male, 11. Nonviolent female, 11. So these are the four groups that are associated with the interaction analysis. And I also get the skew and kurtosis for each one. So violent male group, skew 0 0.207, kurtosis negative 2.03, that's fine. Violent female, we have skew negative 1.26, kurtosis 0.593, and that's fine. Nonviolent video game played by the males, 0.197, kurtosis negative 0.93, and then we got the nonviolent video game playing by the females, and we have skewness of 0.3 and kurtosis of negative 0.157. And again, there are no outliers that are really to be concerned about in these data, just some warning signals based on the multiplier of 1.5. So that is an approach to evaluate skew in the way that is arguably the more appropriate, which is evaluating it at the level of the analysis, which is what all the simulation research is based upon to justify the rule of skew 2 and kurtosis 9.